Jose, thank you. Chris Stipes in the newsroom here. We're going in-depth this morning. The president's job speech. He laid out his plans during a joint session of Congress last night. The president put forth a package of about $450 billion in tax reductions and new federal spending. It includes the extension of the uh, payroll tax cut for workers that's set to expire at the end of this year. The payroll tax would also be extended to employers. Construction of schools, roads, and bridges would be among the spending projects. So I said we were going in-depth, and indeed we are. We've got financial expert Lance Roberts and political consultant Mustafa Tamiz here. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. First off, Lance, let me start with you. $450 billion package, uh, tax cuts, and infrastructure spending. From a strictly economical standpoint, in your opinion, will it work? Um, typically, no. And, and the reason is, is that we are in a balance sheet recession. This is very different than a normal economic recession. So short-term stimuluses won't actually help the economy because short-term stimuluses will get saved or paid down on debt rather than recycled back into the economy. So things like tax cuts that are for one year, and as you saw with the tax cuts from last year, had absolutely no effect on the economy. Actually, the economy's weakened since the last package. So we're recycling the same exact tactics again, expecting a different result, and I think that was one time defined as insanity. So, uh, Mustafa, let me get to you. Uh, politically speaking, a lot of people doubt whether this package will ever even make it through Congress. I mean, the president was so adamant, sign this bill now. How many times did he say that last night? <laughs> he said the 14 times. It, it, you see, you really counted. Uh, so. It doesn't have a chance because we even saw a lot of Republicans didn't even show up. It's like a lot of people are covering their ears before he even lays out the plan saying we're not going to listen to anything you say. Well, past this debt ceiling conversation, you, you're amazed that anything could pass. But I think the president's got mixtures of things that, that people have supported in the past. And so going forward, it's likely we're going to see something pass but not everything passed. Right. Mm -hmm. It yeah. drew comparisons by many to the huge stimulus that we yeah. saw several years ago, the $787 billion. That was very complicated, of course, and uh, provided, I guess, too little bang for the buck. Right. This is much smaller in scope, though at the same time larger than a lot of people expected. Uh, much different packages here, right? Well, it, is, it is very different. Um, it, the difference, though, is that it's still targeted at the same thing. Again, infrastructure spending, as an example. Um, if you're gonna target infrastructure, target it at areas that are actually growing. A lot of the infrastructure that wants to be rebuilt are in areas that aren't growing, so you don't get a lot of re receipt back from that. And furthermore, infrastructure projects take too long. He was talking about he's gonna reduce regulations by 500 regulations. Well, since he's been in office, he's increased regulations. There's over 4,000 new regulations in the pipeline that really impedes business growth. We have talked several times about how the struggling economic situation that we're in is because of the lack of consumer confidence. The president was incredibly confident last night, and we saw, you know, flashes of the 2008 campaign. I mean, I got chills several times during the speech because he really made you believe that this could work. It, well, Mustafa, well, you're well, taking well, his demeanor. I think, well, I think that President Obama's at his best when he's in this campaign mode. So coming back, you know, what the Democrats have been looking for him to do was to, was to fight. And, and he demonstrated that last night. The things that I was listening for that I think is going to be impactful, especially here in Houston, he talked about a lot of local projects, and he actually mentioned Houston yeah, by yeah. name. Exactly. And so if we're going to get funding for our light rail project, that means a tremendous increase to our local economy. The package, quite noticeably, does not include anything about housing, which many people say was what created the whole economic recession in the first place. Lance, surprised not to see any stimulus or anything to do with housing? Yeah, actually, we uh, wrote a, a blog on this yesterday talking about what we expected to see in there. And one of the items was is a some type of situation to help mortgages. One of the big problems that people have now is because they're underwater in the mortgage. It's called lack of mobility. They can't move from a distressed area to, say, Texas to a growing area with jobs to get a better job to get themselves back on track because they can't get out from underneath their house. So it was very surprising that one of the biggest drags in the economy right now is the depression in housing. And to see absolutely no mention of that whatsoever was really kind of shocking so gentlemen go ahead and Mustafa well I, I think that the, the challenge is that you've got to put some money in the economy but there's no money to put in because if you put right. in more money you go into a deeper debt so what he's put forward is a plan that looks at opportunities to increase revenue right while at the same time uh, putting in it where it's needed like like with, like with things that create jobs so infrastructure which he didn't use the word at all infrastructure right 
but he talked about it, and he talked about it in a very hyper-local way. They're going to be going out there talking about which bridges that they want to fix, which schools that they want to fix. And when, they, when you begin to do that, that's what moves legislation in the United States Congress, because each representative is looking for, what am I getting in my district? So if you can create enough of those type of projects and begin to do a campaign mode where you go out to specific districts, he's going to be in Virginia in Eric Cantor's district. He's going to be uh, in, in the Speaker's district. And that's going to create a little bit of a buzz, and he's going to be able to point to things and saying, this is what I want to fix. If you want that fix, then tell your congressman to vote for this bill. Great insight, gentlemen. You guys have time to stick around. We're going to hook up with you guys once again in the 8 o'clock hour. I want to ask you about uh, the potential of closing loopholes, specifically for oil and gas companies, because that obviously has a big effect here in the Houston area. So we'll see you guys once again at 8 o'clock. Mustafa Tamiz and Lance Roberts, thank you. Thank you. Melissa Beck. President Obama says he has a plan to get millions of unemployed Americans back on payrolls, and he's calling on Congress to pass his plan immediately. He unveiled his $450 billion plan while addressing a joint session of Congress last night. He wants to invest infrastructure by building roads and schools while handing out tax cuts for small businesses and other employers. The president says it's now in the hands of Congress. The question is whether, in the face of an ongoing national crisis, we can stop the political circus and actually do something to help the economy. They hire anyone who has President spent Obama says the plan would be paid for by tax increases on the wealthy and making cuts to federal programs. But not all lawmakers are agreeing here. Many Republicans say the president's plan is just another spending bill the nation simply can't take on. So can the country afford for the president's proposal or is it too little too late? Chris Stipes is getting some reaction from experts. Hey there, Chris. Good morning, Melissa. Yeah, we've got Lance Roberts, financial expert, and of course, Mustafa Tamiz, our political consultant. Lance, let me start with you and just looking at some of the numbers. Uh, the plan offers about $245 billion in tax relief for individuals and businesses. Right. Specifically, what does this mean for businesses? You're a business owner. Right. You own several small businesses. Right. What does this mean to you? Um, not, a mo not a lot, really, because the, the problem is, is that temporary measures, such as the temporary tax cuts, you're going to be $4,000 to hire a guy that's been out of work for six months. It's a good idea. The problem is, is that I have to continue to pay him long after that $4,000 tax cut expires. So a temporary tax cut won't boost hiring because what businesses hire for is when there's increased demand on their business. Mm -hmm. When the consumer starts buying and that aggr that final demand hits business and they go, you know, wow, I can't keep up with the business, then they hire. They don't hire just because you give them money. They'll take the money and pay off debt. One of the big sticking points as we've been discussing how to save money in our country is the president has wanted to tax wealthy Americans more. Sure. And now talking about, of course, closing these big tax loopholes for big companies. Uh, Republicans have never been a fan of, of taxing the wealthy Americans more. Mustafa, I mean, why would we think that this is any different now? Well, I, I think that there's some uh, wealthy Americans out there like Warren Buffett that yeah. are also talking about this because what we're seeing is a, a great disparity between people that have and people that don't. And so if we're going to build a long-term economy uh, that's vibrant, that's sustainable, then more people are going to have to have piece of the pie. And so even part of this program, what we're seeing is the president is, is putting forward plans that if you hire someone, that's when you would get the tax credit rather than just giving the money to people. So how, about, how about in terms of, I mentioned, closing those uh, tax loopholes? I mean, that would obviously have a big impact look, here in the Houston area. Absolutely. Look, you know, reforming the tax code, which is what he talked about and is, is the best idea he had really out of the whole speech, is reforming the tax code. You can actually lower tax rates, reduce the loopholes, and actually increase revenue. And, and ultimately what this all comes down to is we do have to increase revenue to the government. But if you start taxing raising taxes on the people that create the jobs, they in turn start hunkering down again and getting defensive. And just a word to Warren Buffett, if you're so big about paying taxes, nothing's stopping you to stroke a check to the government and pay off a couple billion of debt. They'd be more than happy to take the money. I've heard a lot of people say that, in fact. Uh, can we afford it, Mustafa? This plan, $450 billion, can the country afford it, given that we want to cut $1.2 trillion in the next year? Yeah. Well, I think what he's talked about, which is very different than the past, is he's actually going to propose legislation. So for a long time, the, the question was, the president's putting some ideas, but he wanted Congress to put the legislation together. This time, he said a week from Monday, he'll be proposing legislation that will do that. And he said that this would pay for itself. And what, what, what it really means is that this is not going to put us further into deficit. So 
you know, the the devil's always the detail, and we'll get to see that plan very soon. Right. And the only the only issue with that, though, is is that uh, the tax cuts that were proposed during the deficit fighting deal were not actually spending cuts; they were reductions in future spending. And it's just basically saying, I already spend too much, but I'll just spend a little less too much in the future, and it doesn't really solve your deficit problem. And, and this, this this kind of super committee that was assigned yeah. to come up with 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 the cuts, um, you know, the legislation that passed last time has this has this uh, triggers built right. in so if they don't actually come up with a plan that'll be voted up or down then what you're likely to see is 10 percent uh, cuts across defense uh, for, uh, also as well as um, entitlement, entitlement programs yeah uh, I, I thought the most fiery part of his speech yesterday and I think you'll probably agree is when he was essentially speaking to his critics who say we're not gonna basically listen to you we're just gonna wait for 14 more months until the next election and that's how we'll solve this problem he says there's 15 million unemployed Americans who can't afford to wait you know 14 months I mean this is really a political game here I mean are we likely to see another huge battle in Congress uh, and you know we want this we want this negotiation continues and then we could end up with a really watered-down version that's not going to have as big of an impact as it should we're gonna have a watered-down yeah, version that's gonna pass before the and, end of the year <laughs> and, and, what's gonna, and what's gonna be worse is the infighting and just like we saw uh, during the debt debate is that that political infighting causes businesses to contract even more because it just takes their focus off what the issues are with with the economy what they can plan for because now all this infighting just makes things that much more cloudy and, and what you're going to see basically is positioning for the next election. Absolutely. The president's going to want to walk away from this from this battle as passing some kind of legislation and going to the next election cycle saying, I got this legislation passed. The Republican Congress, on the other hand, is going to look for ways to either so, not do something or do something in a way to say we've done this despite the president and try to claim victory for that. So safe to say I think we'll be talking about this for the next year so you guys will be quite busy coming in to talk to us. Lance Roberts and Mustafa Tamiz, appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Back to you. 818 right now and the country is